Hello, hello everyone. It's MEC and you're listening to the Well of Being podcast. Today we are talking about the concept of learning to love your body, your vessel, basically your outer person because it's something I am working on right now despite the fact that it sounds incredibly cliche and kind of cringy. I set one of my New Year's resolutions, if you listen to the last podcast, about the fact that I would like to go in the mirror and look at myself and like myself slash love myself more often than not. Okay, that is the goal. Like, more times than not, I would like to look at my person and be like, yep, I like that. I like you. You're pretty cool. And that sounds really silly, but the reason why I say that, and I don't say I just want to like love myself all the time because blah, 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 is because I think often I go on to like Instagram or YouTube or whatever, and I see people who are talking about body positivity in a very specific way. And it typically is around, I love every aspect of myself right now, all the time. And I think sometimes they often imply that if you're not at that point, that you have to do a lot of internal work to get where to the point that they're at. And that if you remain the way that you are, that you're not enlightened or something like that. And I think it's great that people feel the way that they love their vessel all the time. That's actually great. That's fabulous. But... I think that a lot of people are not there yet, myself included, and it feels a little bit alienating sometimes when it's like you have to love yourself all the time and your vessel all the time. Because I'll be honest, there's going to be times when you wake up in the middle of the night and you slept real good, real hard on your face. You got those lines on your face like after like a really good sleep and you maybe like also your hair looks ridiculous and your clothes are dirty. <laughs> or something, and you go and look in the mirror, and I, you know what, listen, I don't know if you're going to like the way you look in that moment, okay, and I don't want to punish myself, and be like, oh, well, I'm not, I have so much more internal work to do, because I don't like the way I look in this moment, because it's kind of hard to, I feel like that's a space where, like, okay, naturally, I don't look my best right now, according to myself, why should I penalize myself for that, (laughs) if that makes sense, I think it's very possible to, you know, do the work, and by the work I mean, you know, like, go to therapy if that's the way that you like it, you know, do journaling if that's the way you enjoy doing that. Sometimes it just really takes having very regular and difficult and honest conversations with yourself about what you need to do and the, you know, the work that needs to be done. I think that that counts. Rather than, you know, go after this all or nothing, I have to love myself all the time, or I have not reached this goal. So that's why I say it that way, because I think there are days when you wake up and you feel more vulnerable about certain insecurities than others. I don't want to punish myself for that vulnerability. I don't see the point in it. So I would like to like myself more often than not when I look in the mirror. That is my goal. Why did I set that goal? I set that goal in December uh, because... I had had a pretty difficult mental health time around October. During that period of time, I was focusing on trying to survive as a medical student and person who was not feeling very great. Everything else was not as important to me, including my skin, which meant that my skin got very bad and that it ended up... (laughs) you know, having a lot of hyperpigmentation because I'm a person of color. I get a lot of hyperpigmentation after acne. Because of that, it also lasts for months. It lasts for months. So as a result, that acne that I had in October, I still have uh, marks from in January. And I was finding that in December, I was really looking in the mirror and not liking what I was seeing, which uh, was kind of a interesting experience I was actually avoiding my reflection or looking at my reflection in the mirror because I found it so disappointing. I really want to focus in on that. I looked at the mirror and did not like what I see. And not only did I not like what I see, I found it disappointing. And I had never had that experience before. And I acknowledge that part of that comes from a certain level of privilege I was granted society-wise because I fit into some societal categories of where 
you know, like you fit a certain beauty standard. I happen to be a pretty slender human, okay? And so that's one of them. And so there are certain insecurities, right, that we have that we can cover up pretty easily. And there's other insecurities that may, people may have where you can't cover it as easily. And I had, like when I was in middle school and when I was in high school and college and like now, like with issues with my skin, with hyperpigmentation, that is something I can go and cover up with makeup, even if I don't want to, and then go about my day and I don't have the same level of insecurity that I had before because it's covered, right? It's, it's, it's easy to hide. There are other insecurities that people may have that may be related to like the way their body is shaped. It might be like a variation in appearance that someone naturally has from birth, whatever have you, that are not as easy to cover up. I would say even like the fact that like as a woman of color, like growing up in a predominantly white school and being black and like knowing that I was not like the default concept of what people would consider beautiful or like what would be attractive, that definitely affected me. And there's not a way that I can just go and change my race, right? In a similar way, it's not easy to just go and change your body shape, your body type, or like any sort of other variation that you may have, right? It's not as easy for some people to have and cover up an insecurity, right? So I want to acknowledge that first. And second, I want to talk about the fact that like there's intersectionality, right? Uh, you can fit some beauty standards, right? And not fit others. And you're still like one person. And you have this kind of like amalgamation of different characteristics that people can view as positive or negative. And I think that that's something that people don't hold to enough. And they're like, well, you have, you know, this positive, like physical attribute and you have this positive, so you can't complain. Like your insecurities, okay, don't become invalidated because somebody else, you know, doesn't feel them, right? And I, I think that that's something that happens pretty frequently when you are younger because if you express the fact that you feel insecure about something, that's something that you're feeling internally, okay? Uh, whether someone, you know, hypes you up or not, that might help, but, like, at the end of the day, it's something that has to do with your relationship with you and no one else's. And so someone coming up to you and telling you that that's not valid feels pretty garbagey. It doesn't feel great. And I don't want to do that to anyone who's listening to this. So just acknowledge that as well as the second point. So we have these kind of basic ground rules on, you know, how insecurities affect us and the fact that like we can be complex individuals who have like different uh, series of things that we feel either confident about or not confident about that society tells us are great about ourselves and things that society is like, nah, we don't really like that very much. Okay. And then also, I really want to just emphasize that even if you are aware of the fact that society is teaching you to not like the way that you are, it doesn't mean that you're immune to it just because you're aware that those things are happening. I can go on, you know, any series of social media or look at, you know, the way that people are presented on TV and be like, wow, I can tell that they're actually teaching me that I am not that beauty standard. And I don't like that. And I'm, I'm going to actually work on my relationship with myself. I can have all those thoughts and those good intentions and be aware of what's going on and still feel like I am not good enough physically because of those influences, right? Like just being aware of them does not make it go away. And I think that that's something that people need to really, I don't know, learn more because I just think it's really annoying when people are like, well, you know that, you know, they're teaching you that is wrong. So you should just get over it. Or like, you're aware of what's happening. So just like ignore it. It is not that easy. It's not, I'm sure all of us are aware. And so like, if someone has done that to you has like, you know, invalidated your feelings regarding the, you know, physical insecurities you have, I am sorry. Cause you don't deserve that. And that's not what's, that's not what this space is for. This space is validating. So want to get that out first. Um, kind of circling back to like my personal experience with these insecurities around my skin. Um, like I was mentioning, I get hyperpigmentation. It lasts for months. Um, this happened starting like when I was in middle school. Um, you know, I would get acne like to a moderate amount. And I think was already kind of highly aware of the fact that like as a 
like younger black girl, that I was not like the same beauty ideal as uh, many of the people who I liked when I was in school. Um, and so I was not really perceived as an option. You know, you were not really even considered a contender in this, you know, dating or relationship or like liking space because you didn't fit the bill to begin with. Now add on to that, like, you know, personal insecurities re- regarding this hyperpigmentation that I had. I It was just kind of, it wasn't something that like heavily affected the way that I interacted with myself, but it was more insidious. And I think it built up to a point where I was like, well, I can just slap some makeup on this and I look better and that's fine. But the problem was I didn't like the way I looked before I put on the makeup. I put on the makeup. I liked the way I looked. Then at the end of the day, I'd take it off and I didn't like myself again. And I don't really love that. Don't love that dynamic for a couple of reasons. I have nothing wrong with makeup, obviously. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, what I do have is a problem with like where I am using something as a crutch or as a means to further dislike the way that I already am, okay? And I think part of this comes from viewing your current self as a transient state. I think that people have found a lot of uh, ways to be like, well, I bought a pair of pants and they don't fit me now, but they're going to fit me in like a month when I do X, Y, and Z. It's a very similar way of viewing things. I am not viewing my current state as my reality right now because I'm like, well, I'm going to change in a way that I, you know, however you want physically and I'll like myself better then. So I will just treat myself as if I'm there. And you ignore the fact that you like look like the way that you look like now and you're not really accepting yourself the way you are and it's kind of toxic in my opinion. And I was doing this. I was like, well, my hyperpigmentation will be gone uh, after it's treated and you know, after I use all these uh, serums and dark spot correctors and whatever and then I'll be pretty and I'll like myself. And I kept saying that and I kept getting acne and I kept getting the hyperpigmentation. I was like, well, I'm gonna get, once it's gone, I'll like myself, I'll like the way I look in the mirror, and that's fine. So I can keep wearing the makeup, it's fine. And I kind of developed this like cyclical relationship with myself where I'd be like, well, I'm going to like myself in the future, so it's fine. But then you don't like yourself now, and that, that future may or may not come, and like that's something that I think is really difficult to like be counting on. And that's part of why I set this resolution was because I was like, I really don't want to view myself as this transient state. Like I want to like the way I am now and like, or at the very least accept the way I am now and be like, yeah, that's my person. That's MEC and that's fine. And you know, you're pretty cool and and whatever. So what I've been doing to counteract that like mentality is I'm training myself to be comfortable with who I am in the mirror. It is not easy. Uh, because like I said, I was avoiding the mirror. And if you're ever someone who has done that, avoided your, the person that you see in your, in the mirror and like really had a difficult relationship with, you know, body dysmorphia or like the way that you perceive yourself, the way that other people perceive yourself, I am sorry. That's not something you deserved. It's not something you asked for. It's not something you should have had to deal with. Um, and you know, this is how I'm handling it. I only allow myself to wear makeup when I look in the mirror without it and still think I'm beautiful. Let's think about that. If I look in the mirror, you know, after washing all the crusties off my face, listen, I give myself a little bit of leeway here. After I have, you know, become you know, done my routine or whatever, if I look in the mirror with a bare face and I'm like, yeah, I like the way I look, then I can wear makeup if I want to because it's like, you know, a fun thing that I want to get dressed or like want to, you know, get a little extra fancy or something or want to play with a new product, then I can. If I look at myself and I want to hide or I want to fix or the first thing I think of is, oh, I wish that was gone, I don't wear the makeup. I don't. And it's really hard actually it's become more difficult than I thought it was going to be because 
I have really become used to, like I said, this transient view of myself. Well, it's going to be, it's going to go away later. Or if I use this makeup, it'll go away for a period of time. And therefore I'll like myself then. So why don't I just do that? But I'm tired of living not in the present, right? It's annoying. <laughs> um, and so this is what I've been doing. And I've been doing this now for hmm, the entire month of January for sure, but I was doing it also a little bit in December and it has really done me wonders. <laughs> it really has. I feel like I've begun to accept my the way that my skin heals itself, which is through hyperpigmentation. Um, I, I have more days that I'm like, wow, yeah, I you know what? I may not love the hyperpigmentation, but I still can see the fact that I am a beautiful person underneath that or like in spite of that or like even with it sometimes like that's like you know the best outcome and I feel like I'm using makeup for like the reasons that I want to use it like oh it's just fun and I can experiment and you know I can like support black owned brands which is something I'm really into right now I can like use makeup for like the reason I want to use it personally and I think that that's the main key here is like you are it's not about for me personally it is not about how other people view me right? I, I don't think people are going to look at me and be like, wow, look at that girl with hyperpigmentation. She's not good at her job. <laughs> like, I don't think that. I don't think people are going to really be paying attention. They're just going to see me as another person. I want to do this because I want to heal the way that I talk to myself, the way that I interact with myself. The fact that when I look in the mirror, the first thing that I look at is, wow, look at that thing you could pick and, 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 and get rid of. I love doing that. And it's very annoying. And <laughs> I don't want to like view myself as like a project to fix. Like when I look at me and be like, yeah, that girl, she pretty cool, you know? Um, and so that's, that's been the main way that I've been trying to heal the way that I view my skin as like this current acute issue of me not liking the way I see myself in the mirror. And so I'm just training my brain to become comfortable with my bare face because this is who I am. Under <laughs> this is this is this is who I am like 90% of the time. Um and so I think that that's something that's been very helpful. I think like I mentioned earlier the dynamic that you're like running away from yourself and you don't like accept your current vessel as your present one because you don't think it's good enough or you don't think it's adequate. And that's just a load of garbage it's not true you know and people like I said most of the time people just view you as as like a person like oh that's another person but for you those insecurities have like extra special meaning because they probably have like a root and some hurt well someone said something rude or frankly just like not responsible to you like people some someone was not responsible with their words and like said something that stuck with you all this all this time I still remember like very key times like when I was younger where someone said something that was not responsible about my appearance or about like my body or something like that and it stuck with me for a long time I still I can tell you every single one of them there's ways that small comments right can take a small root a small seed and then become a larger insecurity with ourselves and like it's something we don't necessarily realize acutely but you remember <laughs> you remember those things and so if someone has said something been reckless with their words that has affected you in that way I'm sorry that's horrible <laughs> and if you were actively taking steps to heal your relationship with your vessel that is amazing and if you want to do something like that that's also amazing because I think the concept of hope and being excited about the notion of healing your relationship with yourself is in itself probably a, the biggest step because you're aware of it and you're like, I have a plan and I, this is something I want to do. And I was on uh, one of my Pinterest lives the other day. I love those because people can like really talk to me and I can have like a good conversation with the community that I have. And I was mentioning some of these dynamics that I was noticing, like with the way that I was like looking in the mirror and someone had mentioned that she was really uncomfortable with um, her weight distribution for a very long time and that she has been taking hip-hop dance classes 
in order to kind of get a better relationship with her body because she was like learning how to move and she was like seeing all the different things that she could do with her body that she didn't realize that she could do before in the way that it could be graceful and beautiful and it didn't really matter what it looked like it can still have those attributes regardless of the way that the weight is just like distributed and like I just thought it was so not only is that like amazing but like the concept of like getting to know yourself through like a a new hobby or getting to know your body in that way is just it is actually something that is very powerful and I was just like so excited for her (laughs) like that's so cool so I really encourage you to find a very intentional activity or like practice or way that you're holding yourself accountable to learning to either live with or learning to uh, work through these physical insecurities because I think it's not super helpful to me personally when they're like oh well just get over it just acknowledge those societal you know uh, influences and ignore them and then you're done I think you really have to form a relationship with yourself through an intentional practice or through an, an exercise that you're doing on a daily basis. Um, what, you know, like a mental exercise or it could be physical if that's something you're interested in. But I think that that's the best way to do it. And so for me, like I mentioned, it's this practice of being like, why do I want to wear makeup and how do I view myself truly today? Am I going to make myself crazy over like the way that I've I've been like the way that my face is or am I going to say you know what today is not I'm, I'm feeling extra vulnerable and I'm not gonna like punish myself for that I'm just going to you know look at myself and be like let's not pick let's not nitpick all the things that I don't like about my face and just live right um so whatever practice you can find yourself really starting to like reassess that relationship with yourself that is amazing and I think that that's something that I would love to hear if you have like ideas for what those activities could be or what those practices could be please feel free to like dm me I'm just really interested in getting to know you and also like what you're doing with this information because I think it's really helpful and informative um just to like other people to like share your story and how you're feeling but yeah that is that is something that I've been working on as my first resolution I think this is a time where you know it's January 14th right now when I'm recording this this is a period of time where people tend to get very either jaded or frustrated or we start to run into our first round of mental obstacles regarding New Year's resolutions or goals that we have set for ourselves. It's like when you're two weeks in and you're like, I'm actually getting kind of tired of this. Do I really care that much? And for this particular uh, goal of mine, I care a lot because I think it is, you know, like you're, you're the person who you, you're with most of the time. Like the number one person I'm going to be spending time with in this entire lifetime of mine is me. And so I might as well like the person who's inside this vessel and the vessel that I'm carrying it. And like, if I don't like it some days, then so what? It's fine. That's fine. But I would like to like it more often than not. And that's my goal. And I think I'm doing a pretty okay job at it. I'm trying. I'm not going to lie. I still look in the mirror and I'm like, wow, I could pick that and that, ooh, that could be gone. And oh, I should wear a mask today. Ooh. Um, like, I'm not immune to it. Like, I'm not going to be like, oh, yes, I've completely romanticized the concept of asking myself if I want to wear makeup. Nah, nah, it is not that cute. It's not, I'm like, no, no, we're not wearing concealer today. You, no, you didn't pass that test, so you're going to have to let yourself be vulnerable, and that sucks, but do it, okay? So just to, like, give you that perspective. I am going to sign off for today, and I hope you have a lovely rest of your day, evening, whenever you're listening to this. And if you have any other topics that you want me to cover, please feel free to let me know. Like I said, in the DMs of like my Instagram or Pinterest, it's always lovely being here. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.